I don't wow. think the man incompetent. I don't think he has. I think he has duped everybody once again, just like he duped my family since 1945. Unfortunately, we saw some news this week that I thought was just really, really bad, really horrible. Disgraced former Cardinal Theodore McCarrick deemed not competent to stand trial in abuse case. So here again, his victims have to go and see that uh, justice is not served. We've invited James Grind to be back on the program to catch us up. James, good morning to you. Thank you for your time today. Good morning, Joe. I'm very, very happy that I'm here to explain what really happened in Wisconsin on Wednesday. In August of this year, I spoke to the DA in Wisconsin to find out what would happen if he were to be found incompetent in that state. And they said to me very calmly and comfortably is that in constitutional law in the state of Wisconsin, a case cannot be dismissed because of incompetency. Mm. So the case is now suspended. He has been found incompetent, yes. But if Mr. McCarrick is walking down the street, if he's having a conversation on a telephone, if he's anywhere seems to be competent enough, he is hauled back to court and he has to face the judge. So, so for me, I kind of knew that this was going to be suspended because his side, his lawyer fights for it to be dismissed big, bigfold. I don't understand how another human being can defend evil. Let me ask a question. Where where does McCarrick live? Where, where does he reside? He lives in the Viani Center in Dittmer, Missouri. He's, yeah, so it's the Viani Center that's us, that is <clears throat> run by the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. He's been thrown out of the Catholic Church, but yet he still lives in their facilities. Even though he's never drawn a salary before, he still receives money from the Catholic Church and the Vatican. How are the victims of this of this wolf? How do they? I can I just imagine how many people have rejected the church because of the wolves that uh, tend to uh, rise to the top, so to speak. How do they deal with this? Well, there, there are lots of organizations who can help you deal with this. I was on the phone yesterday with probably 53 people, 53 guys who were crying, who couldn't understand it. I, I said to them, I wish you would come with me before uh, all of this, just to be sitting next to me in Wisconsin so that, so that the DA there could see the, the vast death that he has, uh, he has created. Yeah. So how do I deal with it? How do they deal with it? We, we all prayed together yesterday for hours. Mm. We're wow. well, 45 minutes on the phone, and then we, we, we prayed with and then came back together. We follow the light of Jesus Christ, not the light of Bergoglio, not the light of the parish priest, the light of Jesus Christ. And that will guide us home, guide us back to where we need to be, where we want to be, where we wanted to be before we got abused, so that we can start our lives there and live there and mm -hmm. live in a happiness that's second to none. I will mm -hmm. say this. Mm -hmm. I have asked the, the DA in Wisconsin, Zeke, to come. I gave him 12 questions and I want him to answer those questions. They're very, very pertinent to the day uh, of Wednesday and what he had promised me back in September. And he said that in, in a couple of weeks on in January, I will start to receive those answers. And then from there, I will start a plan. My next statements that I'm going to make, and those are the next plan that I have to do going forward. Because I promised everybody in 2018 that I would never stop. And I won't. And I will, I will make sure that Mr. McCarrick, I'm going to be the doubting Thomas. I want to see the holes in his hands, and I want to see the, the ripped in the sides, and I want to see the the uh, the, the, the I want to see the damage that this man has. I need to see that. Uh, what is his mental status? I mean, can can he be can he be observed walking around his retirement Catholic retirement facility in Missouri, or or what is his status in that regard? I, I would believe that the Viani Center is going to uh, keep him under guard. Not nobody's going to go allowed to go see him. Mm. But. Uh, we're going to find a group of people who want to go see him. I, I think I'm going to go get one of his real nephews and we're going to go visit Uncle Ted. 
Oh, wow. And that's, uh, that's my plan. He has, so he's under lock and key, but he's not in a rehab facility. If he is that sick and that immobile, he should be in a hospital so he doesn't hurt himself. But nobody's yeah. ever given me that answer of where he is and what he's doing. There are other people who have told me that, oh, we had a conversation with him two weeks ago. And I, that I believe. I don't wow. think the man is incompetent. I don't think he has. I think he has duped everybody once again, just like they do. he duped my family since 1945. Hmm. The man is well versed on how to get things done differently than they appear. To your knowledge, has he ever repented of his crimes? Never has repented. So it was in 2012 when I told him I was going to out him at my mother's funeral. And he said, go ahead and try it, Jimmy. No one's ever going to believe you. You're just a drunk and, a, and a, a liar and a drunk. Don't you know who I am? Yeah. I'm the, I'm the most powerful person in, in the world. I turned and cried. I couldn't do anything about it. Then my time came in 2018. And he's had conversations with other uh, reporters and the police from Wellesley, Massachusetts went out there. He was fine in 2020. And then all of a sudden, as the trial date approaches, he's mm -hmm. incompetent. His defense lawyers ran out of continuances. Couldn't possibly move, kick the can down the road anymore. So they had only one thing to do, make him incompetent so he never had to stand trial. So Barry Colburn's... Uh, record could still be untarnished. What are the chances that McCarrick will ever face uh, legal justice? I know he'll have to face eternal justice on his deathbed, but uh, legal justice at this point, will he, will he ever face justice or is he off the hook? That is for uh, uh, the Lord to know whether I can get into the Viani Center or have any other person get into the Viani Center or find him someplace else. You know, mm. the man may be, uh, uh, may be hiding but he can't hide forever. He'll have to pass away before I stop. What do you think you'll What do you think you will be emotionally dealing with if you were to stand face to face with him again? Well, for a long time, I never wanted to hear his voice because it would always trigger something in my heart or in my mind to, to obey him. In fact, in 2008, I used to listen to his speeches. I could I had to stop. But right now, I know that the, the Lord has filled my mind with such power that it doesn't matter what he does. I'm going there to look for, I'm going to look for the damage that he has to himself, not to what he's done to me, but what has happened to him. I want to see his, I want to see the, the nail marks. I want to see the thorns on his head. I want to see, see his head uh, droop so much that he can't possibly stand up. Mm. I want to see him uh, not be able to even put a sentence together, but in his in, in his deposition with uh, with the uh, with the state doctor in Massachusetts, he has troubles with words, but he was perfectly fluent and easily speaking during his entire fifteen minutes of uh, of doctor evaluation. Wow, he's been doing fifteen that's, uh, minutes. That's very interesting. Do you know, to your knowledge, does he have any contact with any of the prelates in the church at this point? Do does irregular correspondence? I mean, I, I don't know if you could know that or not, but I'm just curious. Do any of the, uh, is it, does if his old buddies, his old pals, his old colleagues still still reach out to him? I don't know exactly. I'm sure that happens. But when I listen to Bergoglio and his actions in, and I, I listen and I read some of the stuff that Bergoglio supposedly has written, those words and those, the, the dictation of it sounds exactly like, uh, like Theodore McCarrick. Mm -hmm. And so I know that he's still, he's still running the church. Anthony Stein said that a couple, uh, about a year ago. He believed that uh, he was still running the church. I still believe he's running the church. Because, you know, he's getting down to the, to the end of his life. And he still wants to be uh, king of the world. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.